Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. This video will address symbology within the mystery schools and Christianity as a perversion of the mysteries. The mystery schools themselves speak using symbology. This symbolic language helps maintain, hide, and keep their real secrets and intent hidden. That which is the great work. The arcana of the ancient mysteries was never revealed to the profane except through the medium of symbols. Symbology fulfilled the dual office of concealing the sacred truths from the uninitiated and revealing to those qualified to understand the symbols. Each of the pagan gods had, besides the public and open, a secret worship paid to him to which none were admitted except those who were selected by preparatory ceremonies called initiation. This secret worship was termed the mysteries. In all the mysteries there was a double doctrine. One natural and as it were material within the reach of ordinary intellects. The other sublime and philosophical which was communicated to those men of genius only who, in the preparatory, had understood the concealed meaning of the allegories. And this is supported by Strabo, who says that it was common both to the Greeks and the barbarians to perform the religious ceremonies with the observance of a festival and that they were sometimes celebrated publicly and sometimes in mysterious privacy. From Egypt, the mysteries went to Persia and were celebrated at Tyre. Osiris changed his name and became Adonai or Dionysius, still the representative of the sun. In Greece and Sicily, Osiris took the name of Bacchus. Those who worship this flame are now called heathens, and this is why they hate Christians. Christians call them heathens. Little do they realize that they are heathen themselves. And I'm talking about those who call these heathens. You see, in the mysteries, they claim that they are baptized with the Holy Spirit, which is fire. For fire is light, and the children of the flame are the sons of light, even as God is light. However, ladies and gentlemen, however much it sounds as if they believe the same as you, this, again, is a metaphor for the esoteric truth of what they really believe. For well, they believe that the God of the Bible is an evil God who held man prisoner in the Garden of Eden in the bonds of the chains of ignorance. And that man was set free, given his opportunity by Lucifer through his agent Satan with the gift of intellect. And that Lucifer is the God of light, not Jesus Christ. The occult science of the ancient magi was concealed under the shadows of the ancient mysteries. It was imperfectly revealed or rather disfigured by the Gnostics. The rise of the Christian church broke up the intellectual pattern of the classical pagan world. By the persecution of this pattern's ideologies, it drove the secret societies into greater secrecy. The pagan intellects then reclothed their original ideals in a garment of Christian phraseology, but bestowed the keys of the symbolism only upon those duly initiated and bound to secrecy by their vows. The blood of Christ, ever flowing in the grail, signified his true doctrine, and the cup which contained it was his esoteric school, the chalice of his adepts. The Christian religion and masonry have one and the same common origin, the ancient worship of the sun. Saint Paul or Saul has been considered a minister of the mysteries. 
the fire philosophy is the basis of all religious mysteries and all the secret philosophies of the universe. It is also the underlying principle of which all secret occult brotherhoods are founded. It was taught in the ancient mysteries and although the knowledge of it has long been lost to the world, it has also been preserved in the occult fraternities. The aim of all true initiates, no matter what the name of the fraternity may be, is to know the nature of the secret fire that regenerates the world and which renders him who comes into its possession immortal. The philosophy of fire underlines all true initiation as well as the secret doctrine and the ancient mysteries. It is likewise the foundation upon which are built all mystic and occult fraternities, the ideal republic and the brotherhood of man. We further believe that he will come to understand why we have reference to the stream of the secret doctrine as humanism. The term is not only used in its popular sense, but to describe the grand program of the mystery schools for the emancipation of man from bondage to ignorance, superstition and fear. Civilization is unfolding according to the predetermined plan and not by accident and fortuitous circumstance. We have distinguished three important divisions in the European descent of the mysteries. First, the order of the quest. Second, the order of the great work. And third, the orders of universal reformation. The first group was dedicated to the restoration of the secret sciences through search and discovery. The second group was devoted to the proof and personal accomplishment of that which was known to be true. And the third group was resolved to apply the proven principles of the esoteric tradition to the enlargement, restoration, and reformation of collective society. There is no question, therefore, that the work to be done in familiarizing the general public with the nature of the mysteries is of paramount importance at this time. These mysteries will be restored to outer expression through the medium of the church and the Masonic fraternity. If these groups leave off being organizations with material purpose and become organisms with living objectives. The idea of a brotherhood of man was a cardinal doctrine in the ancient mysteries because the mysteries could not conceive of any favor in the divine conception. The secret societies have always had in mind the betterment of physical humanity and have been the relentless foes of the autocats, oligarchies, potentates, and of oppression in every form. Teaching in the ideal code of ethics for the establishment of an ideal democracy, not through revolution, but by evolution. The rule of the mysteries was, and still is in other systems, that 12 years of preparation should elapse before the great spiritual experience was permitted that brought the candidate to the light at his center and qualified him for membership, though less sufficed in appropriate cases. As the result of his purification and labors, he had become an illuminate and he was mystically said to be 12 years old. From a rough ashlar, he had become a perfect polished cube, a stone meant for building into the holy city, which we are told lieth four square and has twelve gates that are always open. For all of the parts of his organism were now equalized and balanced. All his gates or channels of intercourse with the divine world, no longer shut and clogged by the darkness of his former impurities lie open for the passage through them of the true light. In masonry, this condition is called the hour of high 12. And he who has attained it will be, like Hiram Abib, in constant communication with and adoration of the Most High. Author from the Arthurian legend represents the formal structure of the mystery schools. Initiation into the mysteries becomes the vernal equinox of the spirit. The mysteries held that man, in part at least, was the product of his environment. Thank you for watching. 
please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses so we can continue doing this work. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you very much.